Hello everyone, myself and Uday Ranjan Gaud, working as Assistant Professor in Department of Aeronautical Engineering, MLR Institute of Technology. So, in the previous session, we discussed about uh, idealization and by considering one problem and we have seen in that how an actual section will be made into an idealized section by finding out its boom areas and replacing the spars by the booms at respective locations. So, now in this, we are going to extend that same analysis of idealization and in fact, we are going to find out here the bending stress or the direct stress distribution in structural idealization. Okay. So, to know that and let us consider one problem on bending and which is subjected to the bending moments and then we will try to find out how the bending stress can be determined by using the structural idealization. So, the figure which you are able to see here that is a fuselage section that is given to us and uh, here in if you look at it, the diagram first and uh, directly he has given the idealized panel. So, what we need to understand here from this diagram is nothing but and uh, directly he gave idealized panel instead of actual panel. So, we have to remember that if the actual panel is given, so we have to you know convert into idealized panel and then proceed for the problem. But here directly he has given idealized panel so that directly you can move into the problem. Okay. So, let us look into the question first. So, the fuselage section that is shown in figure is subjected to a bending moment of 100 kilo Newton meter applied in the vertical plane of symmetry. So, he has given the bending moment applied in the vertical plane of symmetry that is given as 100 kilo Newton meter. If the section has been completely idealized into a combination of direct stress carrying booms and shear stress only carrying panels, he is asking to determine the direct stress in each boom. Okay. So, the idealization is such a way that the direct stress carrying by the booms and of course, the shear stress uh, the carrying panels. Okay. So, this is the question that he has given and uh, the bending moment applied in the vertical plane of symmetry that does not mean that he has given mx and he has given in 100 kilo Newton meter that you have to convert into mm. So, 100 into for 1 kilo you can add uh, 10 cube and for converting meter into mm you can add another 10 cube so that it will become Newton mm. So, that mx will become now 100 into 10 to the power of 6 Newton mm or you can write it as 10 to the power of 8 directly Newton mm that is mx. So, since the bending moment in y plane is not given, so you can consider as my as 0 and if you look at it, the diagram that is a fuselage section, it is having vertical axis of symmetry, vertical axis of symmetry so that you can consider product of inertia i x y is also 0. Okay. So, this is what you have to understand. Now, coming to what he is asking to find is nothing but he is asking to find out the direct stress in each boom. That means, so, we need to find the direct stress in each boom. That means, we need to write first the formula for direct stress. The formula for direct stress distribution is nothing but you know A x plus B y sigma z equals to A x plus B y whereas, the constant A is nothing but you know m y i x x minus m x i x y divided by i x x i y y minus i square x y. And similarly, the constant B is nothing but mx iyy minus my ixy divided by ixx iyy minus i square xy. So, these are the constants A and B and this is the formula for direct stress distribution. Now, by considering my equals to 0 and ixy equal to 0, you can substitute in this formula my is 0, ixy is 0, so that the complete constant A becomes 0. Okay. So, here in the formula for direct stress A is becomes 0 and also if you try to substitute here m y and i x y are 0, m y and i x y are 0 in constant B. So, that you left with only first part of this section and in this also i y y gets cancelled. So, you left with uh, B that is equals to m x by i x x. So, that our stress distribution formula reduces to sigma z equals to straight away mx by ixx into y. 
so you can consider this as equation one okay so again in this the direct distribution mx is given to us and that is nothing but 10 to the power of n 8 newton mm and then we need to calculate the moment of inertia for this problem okay and since the given fuselage section is uh, symmetrical about uh, vertical axis so it is just sufficient for us to first find out uh, y bar its centroid y position of centroid and once you find out and then you can have to locate on this vertical axis of symmetry so that it is become easy for us to calculate the moment of inertia so first look into this problem to calculate the y bar okay and the general formula for y bar and because if you look at into this uh, problem and how many number of stringers are there 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 so there are 16 booms are there okay starting from one and you can observe clearly uh, the diagram that you know at each boom he has given the boom area for example for boom one the boom area is 640 mm square for boom two as well as 15 so you can even write this as you know 16 15 14 13 12 11 10 9 and sorry so this is 16 and this is 1 and you can write like this so 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 the number numbering we need to give accordingly so these are 16 booms so for boom 2 and 16 uh, the area is nothing but 600 mm square for 3 and 15 the area is 600 mm square and for 4 and 16 uh, 14 6, 600 mm square for 5 and 13 again 620 mm square and for 6 and 12 that is 640 mm square for 7 and 11 640 mm square for 8 and 10 850 mm square and for boom 9 it is 640 mm square and boom 1 it is 640 mm square so because it is a symmetrical diagram he has given the boom area uh, on one side and numbering on other side but you need to understand that he has given the boom areas for both the booms because of symmetry okay so now you need to apply the formula for uh, y bar that is you can write a summation bi yi divided by summation of bi okay where b is the boom areas for all the 1 to 16 booms and then here also you have to add all the boom areas for 1 to 16 okay so if you look at that, that uh, y bar and uh, for the diagram if you look at that, if you try to see this diagram y bar okay so let's try to consider you know bottom axis as a reference axis and starting from boom one starting from boom one so we'll write boom area for one for example 640 that is y bar equals to 640 for boom area and its distance from here to here that is nothing but 1200 so 1200 plus now for if you try to write uh, boom area that is br yr for this boom two so boom area is 600 into its y distance is nothing but from here to here it is 1140 so like that you got uh, two booms so multiply by 2 which is nothing but 2 and 16 okay and similarly plus we are going to add boom 3 and for boom 3 area is again 600 and into the distance is nothing but 960 and like that you got two booms then you have to multiply by 2 and next coming to boom 4 and again you can write the area that boom 4 is nothing but correspond to that 600 mm square into the boom 4 distance is nothing but 768 like that again you got uh, two booms plus coming to boom 5 it is 620 into the distance is 565 into 2 plus boom 6 that is 640 into the distance is again uh, 336 into 2 plus and coming to this boom 7 that is 640 is the area into the distance for here to here it is 144 like that you got two booms and then boom 8 boom 8 is area is 850 into its distance is 38 into 2 and uh, boom 9 is not required because we are taking as a reference one so there is no distance so this is on the numerator which is nothing but summation br yr okay and in the denominator what we need to add is summation br okay by multiplying all the respective boom areas that is 640 plus uh, 640 you can write 640 into 2 for boom 1 and 9 
640 into 2 you can write and then uh, coming to this one so 600 like this you have two 600s and one two three are similar so you can write uh, three and there are other side three so there will be six into 600 six into 600 and again 620 is there plus you can write two into 620 and plus uh, 640 640 are there so you can write 4 into 640 that is on the other side also and 850 is there plus 850 you can add so this is the boom areas all you have to add in the denominator so if you do so they are going to get uh, the y bar that is equals to uh, you can clearly get it from here yeah here it is missing but uh, you are going to get it as you know uh, 640 mm approximately 640 mm you are going to get y bar okay so once you get this y bar then you have to locate uh, over here so since we consider here uh, this as a bottom axis so you can consider after 565 and uh, yeah you can consider uh, since we consider from here uh, you may get more than that but uh, 640 the y bar you are going to get from below so you calculate you need to calculate this and find out actual y bar and then you are going to replace it uh, on the y axis like this and this is the central position okay so once you get this central position and then you have to you know find out its moment of inertia so first let's try to write here and uh, for boom one let's try to write all the booms this since there are 16 booms are there so in the diagram we'll try to write uh, nine and uh, remaining booms uh, it will be as it is like boom 2 is nothing but boom 16 and this 15 14 13 12 11 and this is 10 okay so like that you can do here so what you are trying to write is from the centroid position we have to write what is a respective y distance from boom 1 to 9 so if we look at, at this one diagram okay so from here up to boom 1 so what is this distance so the total distance uh, total depth of this one is uh, 1200 mm so you need to subtract this one and so to get this one so what we are getting here it is 660 mm is the y okay so 660 mm so you can consider here so that means here it is uh, y bar we what we got is 540 mm from the calculations what we have seen earlier so instead of this is not uh, 640 okay so since we considered uh, below as the reference line so here from here to here y bar what we got is 540 mm from the below okay that means from above if you can try to consider this as a reference line you would have get a y bar equals to 660 mm okay so that you need to understand so the 1200 minus 540 if you subtract then you are going to get plus 660 for boom 1 similarly for boom 2 you are going to get 600 and 420, 228, 25, minus 204, minus 396, minus 502 and minus 590. Okay, 540. So that is for Y. Then you know already the respective boom areas. So you can write all the respective boom areas. Then the moment of inertia IXX for the respective boom 1 is nothing but given by B into Y square, boom area into Y square. So 660 into 640 square then multiply and write it here you are going to get 278 into 10 to the power of 6 like that you need to find out the individual moment of inertia with respect to all the booms and write it here and then you are going to get all these moments of inertia of respective booms and when you try to sum up all these and you are going to get the ixx for the complete fuselage section okay and uh, then uh, you are going to write the complete section that is sigma ixx equals to sigma summation of all these boom areas okay then thereby you are going to get the moment of inertia total so once you get this moment of inertia then you have to go and uh, substitute in place of here because mx you already know it that is 10 to the power of 8 and moment of inertia you will calculate and write it here and then you are going to get uh, sigma z equals to some constant into y okay so sigma z into constant into y 
and uh, if you try to calculate uh, whatever you get here the calculations moments of inertia so let's uh, try to calculate this moment of inertia also by considering uh, calculator so here we got uh, 278 plus 216 plus 106 plus 31 plus 0 0.4 plus 27 plus 100 plus 214 plus 187 so we got 1159.4 uh, the moment of inertia we got and that you can write it here 1159.4 into 10 to the power of 6 that is the moment of inertia what we got m to mm power 4 so that you can substitute over here that is sigma x equals to 10 to the power of 8 divided by 1159.4 into 10 to the power of 6 and uh, into y you can consider so this 10 power 6 and this goes cancel so you are going to get uh, 100 divided by 11 11.159.4 uh, so you get a constant sigma equals to some constant 100 divided by 11.159.4 so a constant into y so this you can consider a second equation and then when you try to substitute uh, the respective boom area for example if you want uh, sigma z for boom 1 then you have to substitute the y distance the constant will be there so you get approximately some point uh, 0.39 like that you can take for example 0 0.39 and therefore sigma z1 equals to you can write 0 0.39 into the respective y distance which is nothing but 660 mm so you write 660 mm then you are going to get the stress in each boom so you get 35.6 like that and this y distance so according to the boom number you can substitute its respective y distances then you are going to get the stresses for each boom okay so this is how we calculate uh, the direct stresses in each boom for a fuselage section and which is subjected to a bending moment and is been asked to calculate the direct stress distribution and the direct stress in each boom so that we have to use the idealization the formula okay so thank you everyone for watching and uh, in the next session we'll try to see the shearing effect uh, using the structural idealization and probably we'll try to calculate the shear flow distribution as well as the shear stress distribution so thank you everyone